Grimoire of Zero, written by Kobashiri Kakaru, Eve of the Festival Part 02. I heard that Nordis won and the other kingdom lost. I also heard that the two kingdoms were taught different kinds of magic. So which was which? From what chapter did Nordis spells come from? Gouda pursed his lips. Hunting, he said curtly. So magic from the chapters of hunting and harvest clashed, and the former one. No, which chapter had nothing to do with it. It was purely a matter of the power that the kingdom possessed. Which side was more skilled with magic? Look, Gouda stopped and eyed a textile used to partition rooms. The image of a dragon, its protectors, and warriors being chased by the protectors were woven into the fabric. Here on Black Dragon Island, dragons have been worshipped since the days before the church. The dragon living in the volcano was thought to suppress eruptions, and people prayed for peace by offering sacrifices to the holy creature. The princess mentioned something similar earlier. When the church extended its influence on this island 300 years ago, the ritual was abolished. Sometimes the church did good things. The church also treated dragons as sacred creatures, but not as much as before. In those days, there was a famine. Crops didn't grow, food supply was depleted, and the people were starving, so some people decided to look for food in the Forbidden Land. But the royal family opposed the idea. So that is what sparked the Civil War. The textiles showed those who tried to enter the Forbidden Land defeated in the Civil War and driven out of the kingdom. A dragon was depicted on top of a volcano of boiling lava, and a kingdom lay at the foot of the sacred mountain. The people who were driven out of the kingdom were building a new kingdom on the coast. Nordis was built by those who plotted to kill the dragon and were subsequently banished from the kingdom. Zero concluded. Gouda nodded. The people of Nordis are the descendants of hot-blooded warriors. The princess possessed outstanding smarts. While her men were warriors to the core, knights who preferred to fight with swords. In contrast, Altaria's magic core far surpassed Nordis in terms of aptitude in magic, probably due to their scholarly nature. Then how did Nordis win? I asked, did you hear the story about the king of Altaria being killed by the dragon in the Forbidden Land? I did, Zero said. The king had only one child, but his only heir could not use any magic. Oof, it was truly unfortunate. War is a battle of formations with the king at the top, giving orders to his pieces, the soldiers. If the king was incompetent, he wouldn't win a war no matter how superior his soldiers were. Victory would be impossible unless the soldiers ignored the king and took the best course of action, or if they were so invincible that the king's stupid plans would not even matter. In a war where magic was key, the side whose leader could not use magic would inevitably lose. Well, they gave their unconditional surrender, so maybe he's not as incompetent, I said. Where is this successor now? Zero asked. Gouda paused, then took a deep breath. I killed him. He was a worthless man who didn't deserve to live. If he was capable, the king wouldn't have died. They could have won the war even. What about the church? Zero's question was completely different from the topic of discussion so far. What? Gouda said dubiously, unable to immediately comprehend the change in topic. There should be a church on this island. The priest. No, the priest does not matter in this case. Were there no devout church followers on this island who opposed magic? There were. Gouda sighed. I was one. He gave a dry laugh. My expression stiffened. A devout follower becoming the commander of the magic corps? It was the princess's orders. I have no right to refuse. That's so. Must be tough having the gift even though you don't like it. Zero eyed me curiously. It is the strength of your desires and emotions that determine magic aptitude, she said. One would not have the gift if they did not like it. It is unthinkable. So, the captain of the magic corps over here is a devout church follower, but loves magic? That is not what I am saying. Captain, a man called. Gouda stopped in his tracks. We had walked a long way from the bathroom. I didn't even realize there were more people now. It was quite bustling all around. There were stalls with their wares lying on the ground and tables, performers controlling puppets to dance to some music, and stores that seemed to be selling honey-coated fruits on sticks. 
Now this is a festival, I thought. Are you here for some sightseeing as well? The man asked. Judging by his uniform, he was a member of the Magic Corps. No, Gouda replied, glancing at us. The man immediately understood and shook his head in annoyance. I see. Another order from Her Highness. What does that little? Keep your mouth shut, soldier. Insulting the princess will result in punishment. But the man looked even younger than Gouda, like he just graduated from being a kid. The princess thinks I need a break, Gouda said. I believe she pushed this task to me so I can enjoy the festivities as well. I call that being pushy. She just says this is the best choice every chance she gets and wears this look like she knows everything. What's for the best is not for her to decide. Now that I think about, she does say that a lot. Must be her pet phrase. I couldn't help but laugh at the man for perfectly imitating the princess manner of speaking and even her arrogant expression. The young man eyed me curiously. That guy can understand human language? He asked. Of course I can. I answered before Gouda could say anything. What do you think Beast Fallen are? The soldier looked amazed. Wow, he said. Just like Raoul. That's enough, guy, Gouda interrupted. What do you want? Guy must be a nickname. I see. He's quite close with Mr. Frowny Face here. That's why he called out to him. Nothing in particular, the guy said. It's just we didn't expect to see you here, so the guys told me to talk to you. The young soldier shot a glance at the group of uniformed men gathered a short distance away. They waved at our direction. If it's not too much trouble, why don't we all go around? The soldier said. Oh, I guess that's a no, since you're on duty. I do not mind, Zero said as she stepped forward. I quite like being around many people. No, Gouda scowled, pushing Zero back. Mixing up work and personal matters is unacceptable. But you were given this job so you can take a break, right? The soldier said. In that case, it would be more fun hanging out with everyone. Fun? Are you telling me to enjoy the festival? Surprised by his own remark, the soldier lowered his head and said, I'm sorry. I don't think anyone would criticize you for enjoying the festival. Even my father. Gouda heaved a sigh, but before he could say anything, the soldier raised his head. Delight returned to his face. I'm going back to the guys. They'll probably get mad at me for failing to invite you. See you later, Captain. The man bowed and ran back to his friends. Would you look at that? Your subordinates like you, I said. He just feels sorry for me, Gouda replied. I take it that boy does not like the princess, Zero said. Is he from the kingdom that lost the war? For a moment, Gouda hesitated to answer, but realized there was no point in hiding it. So he nodded. Since they're close, that means Gouda is from the same place as well. A young man who killed his own kingdom's successor and became the head of the Magic Corps despite being a church follower could not possibly enjoy the festival. He's the son of the previous commander of the Magic Corps. His father went with the king to slay the dragon and died. If we're talking abilities, he would have been the next head of the Corps. But the princess chose me. Why? Zero asked. You do not seem perfect for the position. It's simple, Gouda replied. His face filled with dismal resignation. To set an example to the defeated kingdom. More than half of the Corps members come from Altaria and she chose the most unsuitable person as its leader.